this last summer um, I went to Anglesey and we went to this little island called Innis Clandwin. You have a view of the, the hills, the mountains in North Wales across the Menai Strait. Um, and I did the sketch on plein air and um, it's a double page spread. Um, but what I'm going to do today, um, I'm going to paint a small watercolour in the studio um, based on this sketch and on a photograph that I took for reference. And here we go. So here's my setup. Um, I've got a sheet of 140 pound uh, watercolour paper, cold pressed, so not, and um, it's actually an A4 sheet. Um, I've divided into two to make an A5, A5 size, um, taped down with masking tape. And today I'm just going to use my in my usual um, paint box that I take when I'm outdoor sketching. Uh, it's got all the colours I need. I'm going to use three brushes. Um, the largest one is a number 12 round by Escoda. Uh, another one in the same series, just a number 8. That's the smallest brush. Um, this is also a number eight, um, but it, as I, as you'll see later, it behaves like a bigger brush, or it is a number eight, and that's by SAA, Imitation Sable. Let's get started. And you can see it's a fairly simple composition. We don't need to do too much detailed drawing. Um, but we're just going to um, sketch in the the main shapes. So I'm going to start. I always do start with the horizon line, and you can just you don't need a ruler for this. Just faintly draw this horizon line. You can take it right across even though the rocks will come over this, this end bit. Do that first. And then um, we need to work out the position. Yeah, so the where the rocks come down to the beach, that's on, on your this this right hand third line this you don't need to be too accurate um got the mountains now we don't want to make the mountains we don't want the pencil line to be too dark and um, because we're going to put some quite pale blue washes on that area now we've got this small island, which is on that, the other third, the left hand third line. Sketch that there like that. Now where water um, comes up against land, it's, it's always going to be a straight line, a horizontal line parallel to your horizon line. You know, if it was sort of sloping down like this, it wouldn't look right.
And as you, I mean, you know, this is the same whether you're looking at a photograph or whether you're out in the landscape. But um, you're drawing and you're always constantly looking up at the source. Um, and you're lining things up. So, for example, to see where where these rocks come in relation to elements in the landscape, I would just look up and see that it lines up roughly with this island so the high part comes up like this right, that's that and if i was out in the landscape you know i might be holding up my pencil and lining up with some uh say a high point uh, and seeing where elements in the, the picture are in relation to each other So that's our basic drawing and now we get our paints ready. Now with watercolour we're always working from light to dark. That means that you, you lay in the palest colours first and you work gradually up to in layers until you um, get to the darkest colour which is what you finish with because um, in watercolour um, your, your white if you've got any areas that are white they would need to be the colour of the paper so we need we would need to preserve those whites now in this particular painting we don't have very much white um, where we have got white is in the sky um, between the clouds as there's, there's some light coming through so what we're going to do um, we're going to put in a, a bluey gray wash in this top this top um, area and then we're going to use some balled up kitchen paper to pick out little areas of light in the sky and that's a really good method um, for giving the impression of light clouds in the sky so um, use a fairly big brush I've got my number 12 Escoda here um, so I'm going to use that Okay, so I'm going to begin by wetting the paper. I'm going to use the wet in wet technique. So get a fairly big brush and put water on. Um, you know, we're going to bring it right over the whole paper. Right down to the bottom. Now I've got quite a lot of water on there. I need to cover the whole paper. It's quite wet. It's not pooling, but it's it's quite wet. Um, the wetter the paper, um, the less pigmented it will look when you actually put the the paint on. So now we're going to, we're going to leave that to just dry out a little bit while I mix the colour for the sky. Um, now one tip, um, a tip for um, working out which are the lightest areas. When you're actually looking at your scene or also at a photograph, if you squint, um, it flattens the image that you see and um, it emphasizes the contrast between the lights and darks. So if I squint at this scene now, I can see that um, the lightest area, no, the lightest area is actually the water, which is reflecting the light from the sky, and those 
patches of light among the clouds. Um, also, the front of the beach is quite pale, in that sort of pinkish, sandy colour. And then the dark areas, obviously the, the rocks where the, the, the brown seaweed. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, I'm going to use, I'm using ultramarine blue. Just a little bit in the palette. And I'm going to mix in, because it's, the sky is not blue, it's, um, it's grey. So I'm going to put a touch of burnt sienna in with the blue. And you can see this makes quite a nice grey. That's kind of okay. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to wash it onto the sky area. And you can bring it right down to where the mountains reach the sea. Now, I was talking about balled up kitchen paper, so I've got a piece here. Now it's quite a small painting, so we don't want to do too much. So make quite a small, sort of crumpled bit. And then just go in and lift out bits of colour where you want the light to be. And this doesn't have to be exactly as it is in the photo. Yeah. And I'm going to make mix a little bit more colour, a little bit darker this time. Same combination. Ultramarine blue with just a touch of burnt sienna. If you put too much burnt sienna in, it will go quite brown. So I'm going to go back in and just emphasise the darker clouds. And you just touch with the tip of the brush. Not all over, just... It's quite nice. And now we will leave that to dry. And while that's drying, now we're not going to do the um, the mountains yet because I want those to dry because we want a fairly hard line um, of the mountains against the sky. But we can use the drying time to work a bit on the foreground. So I'm just continuing this very pale wash over the sea because it's not it's not exactly white. And then I need a color for the sand. Now I've got this color called light red which is very similar to Indian red I don't know if you have this um, but if you don't you can just use um, a little bit of yellow ochre and a tiny bit of um, a red that you have whatever red you have, preferably a cool red, 
Anyway, so I'm going to go in with this Indian red. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to it, make it a little bit more sandy, because it is a pinkish sand, this. Oops. Okay, I'm just going to wash that over the beach area. So we can leave that to dry. Now we're going to put in the the mountains, and we use um, the same blue, ultramarine blue, if you have it. Just a touch of a cool red. This is alizarin crimson. And it makes it veering towards purple. Now, um, it is quite blue in this case. I'm going to add a bit of cerulean. And I keep sort of adding more colours until it looks all right. Yeah, that's kind of looks right. Now, if you look closely at the the line of mountains, you can see that there are layers of different intensities of blue going into the distance so that the uh, the shoreline that mountains moves the water or the darkest blue and then there's a, a mid range of mountains and then the ones in the distance are much paler and this is called aerial perspective which you might have heard of in photography um, so because in watercolor we work from light to dark we put down first a pale line following the line of the mountains and because this rock in the foreground is dark we can just paint over that as if it wasn't there and just bring it down to the water line And again, you can keep going. So I've allowed this uh, the distant mountains to dry now, and we're going to put a second layer on. That will be the middle, the middle distance. So leaving um, the mountains in the in the farthest background as they are, we'll put another layer on coming down to the waterline, not beyond. You can still go across there because it's very dark. We won't, we'll cover that up afterwards. So I'm using um, the same, uh, the same colors, ultramarine blue, um, I actually put a touch of cerulean blue and a 
tiny touch of alizarin crimson or any cool red that you might have. Let's go up into the sky a bit. Let's lower. Always making sure to keep the waterline horizontal. Now we need to leave that one to dry. Now we're going to come in with one more layer just above the waterline. Not a straight line, but just varying the, thick, the height. This is the land closest to the water. Yeah. That's good. Now using a bit of the same colour. Just want to put a little bit of slightly darker water just along here like this. And then with a, a very small brush. I think this is a number, I don't know, oh, it's a very, I think it's a number five or something, but the smallest brush you've got, same colour, a bit of clear water, just blending that down. Into the wet paint, put some little ripples in. Just touch the wet area. There. Now we'll leave that to dry. Now for the area of pebbles, I'm going to mix a nice violety grey. So again, ultramarine blue. Slightly more intense. A touch of this Indian red. Oh, too much. More blue. That's quite purple. If we put it on with quite a lot of water, it will look quite nice. So get um, the larger brush. This is the size 12. Get the paint quite wet. And if you squint, you can see that although the beach is pale, where it meets the water, there is quite a, def a line of definition. Don't worry if it's, it's looking like the wrong colour, but I just want to get some. Right. Just leave areas of the 
previous color showing through. Now what we can do is mix a bit more of the sandy color, which was Indian red with a touch of yellow ochre. Again, quite a lot of water and just go in a bit like that and they will blend together quite nicely. Clear water to keep it pale. Okay, we'll do some of our um, spattering at the end when it's dry to get the pebbles in the foreground. So we'll leave that to dry now. Now we're going to work on the small island and then um, the cliff here and then bringing bring it down into the rocks in the foreground with the seaweed on it. So um, you can see in that, that small island there's quite a few different colours. There are levels, um, there's a, water, a high water line where it's quite dark. Um, there's browns, there's blues, there's greys in there. Um, so I've, I've mixed, um, again, ultramarine blue with a bit more burnt sienna this time to make it slightly a more browny grey. And then I'm going to use some of this raw umber. Now, I don't know if you have that colour. If you don't have raw umber, you can use yellow ochre, which is this one, with a touch of um, burnt sienna which you should have so I'm going to use I'm going to have this in these colors in two separate wells so I can dip into them all right so um, I did actually dry this with a hairdryer, which is something you can do if it's taking a long time to dry, so you don't have to wait. You can uh, use a hairdryer, so I've done that. So now my paper is completely dry. Uh, so we're using the wet on to dry, wet on dry technique. So I'm using some of this this grey that I've mixed. Um, I actually want a smaller brush. So this is a number eight. Uh, it doesn't matter if the first layer isn't dark enough. You can always go over it. You can always make it darker, but you can never make it lighter. So. The base line in to make sure it's straight. And then just looking at the photograph is roughly paint the shape of the rock now need a bit more a darker mix of this grey and while it's still wet make it a bit more brown while it's still wet, go back in and just drop in some colour where you can see that it looks much darker. So there's this line here. As it dries, it will get lighter. It always looks darker when it's wet. Uh, 
I'll put a bit more blue in there. Get some variation in the in the wash. Actually, it needs to be a bit lighter along the, the top, so I'm going to get tissue and just blot out a bit of the colour along there. There we go. Very gently. And um, I also want a lighter line along just above the water I'm going to lift that out not with a tissue but with a brush a dried dried brush I'm going to lift out the colour along and just drag the brush along there I can do that again Now we're going to block in a big, a much bigger area. We're going to mix quite a lot of the grey, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. I'm going to put a bit of cerulean in there as well. That's it. There we go. Well, I'm still using a number eight brush. I've actually got two number eight brushes. But this one, I mean, different brands, they vary. And um, this one is is a, a bigger brush. It's, it is a slightly wider diameter. Um, and it's longer as well. So it, it, it works like it behaves like a bigger brush. Right, so. Oh yeah, hang on. On the top of the cliffs here, there's a bit of grass. So we need a, to mix a green for that. And we want to mix them in advance so that we can um, work wet into wet and the colours will blend into each other. So I will mix a green again using ultramarine and I'm going to use yellow ochre which gives us a nice natural green, quite muted, there we go, quite muted. I like that. I don't like my greens, well, unless it's a summer or spring green. I don't like it to be too garish. Right. So starting at the top with the green. You don't need to be too precise here. suggesting the grass coming up and we've also got um, a bit of um, lichen which is a, a bright golden ochery colour oh, I'll put that in in a minute and I'm going to the next colour is going to be this grey, browny grey colour.
because to vary it you can put in colour directly from from the paint pot. We want to get it quite dark so we cover up the light areas we put in. Now you can bring in a bit more browny grey. Blue, mix on the paper, Oop, that's too, there we Browny seaweed there. Now for this lichen up here, I'm going to drop in a bit of yellow ochre. Now coming down. Drop. Oh, we have a meowy boy. So, right, I'm going to come down. I'm going to put water on here. So we're working wet into wet, and I'm going to drop in little bits of yellow ochre into the water. And this will give us the effect of. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, I think it's lichen. And then in the in the sea in among the seaweed, yeah, it's lichen on the rocks. I think. And then finishing off with the seaweed, which is quite brown, especially coming closer to, into the foreground. Yeah, I, that's something else I should say. Um, colours look warmer as they come towards you and you get a set, uh, the effect of distance by keeping your colours cool. So those, the blues in the background there are cool colours. And um, we're going to make the seaweed more warm brown and we can drop in bits of blue and purple to get the textures right. so keeping it loose just always looking at, at the image whether it's your view or your photograph and just drawing with the brush as you go along just looking at the photo we've got an area we need to be left light there more paint
Okay, that's not too bad. I think at this point we should allow it to dry and then put in the finishing touches. Okay, I've just noticed that I haven't yet done um, these small rocks. So I'm going to put those in now with the, the smaller number eight. Our grey mix, a bit more brown, not too much because it's there in the distance. So it's quite a browny grey. Now you can see this rock is on a level with the island. Again, being careful to keep the bottom line horizontal. Oh, I have a cat who wants attention. So yeah, I'm not going to make those too dark because they are in the distance um, and they would tend to dry, draw the eye forward if you make them too dark. So um, we're going to keep this fairly simple and it's nearly done. I'm just going to put a, a few more darts in this area here and a bit of texture um, the pebbles and a little bit of texture in the seaweed i want a nice some more of this gray with a bit of brown added so ultramarine blue and again Burnt Sienna, I'm going to put a little bit of, sorry, a little bit of Alizarin Crimson or your cool red. Yeah, that's nice. It's more purpley. I don't really want it brown. So that's French Ultramarine with a touch of Alizarin Crimson or a cool red like um, Permanent Rose if you've got that. Um, so we need to define the headland a little bit more against the background. Keep your shapes nice and irregular with rocks. You know, they're not like blocks, man made blocks of concrete. paint and if it's still wet you can go back in and drop in some color it's quite purple now it's quite nice
and a bit more brown as we come closer. I like it with the purple. Yeah, sort of burgundy colour. Just making some dark areas to give it interest, texture. Now we're not painting every, you know, it's just as if, if you're painting plants, you don't paint every leaf. Just suggesting a bit of texture. And if you use your brush on the side, you can do a bit of the um, dry brush technique. That's it. I think that's probably okay so I'm going to make a sort of purpley grey um, to suggest the pebbles yet yeah, more ultramarine blue so this paint needs to be quite quite pigmented so less water more colour Bit of red, bit more red, and I'm going to dull it down with this light red. Oh, where's my colour going? Okay. Touch of brown. So we've got a little well of paint there. So that was ultramarine blue and um, light red. So we dip in the toothbrush. Oh, and I need to. We need to cover the area where we don't want any pebble, any pebbles. So I'll cover the sea. And there we go. I think that's, uh, I think we'll call that finished. Here's the finished painting. Uh, now for the exciting bit, where we remove the masking tape. Carefully pulling it away from the painting, which avoids damaging the paper. And there we have it.